disclaimer right away. Oh my god. Disclaimer. Uh, uh, the meal, the only meal that I've had today, I'm still currently eating. This is not my only meal. I've had a lot today. Have you? Mm hmm. Hey, I can hear me. I can, I can hear you too. Moist carbonara mouth sounds. Sorry, guys. Is there bacon in here too? Yeah. Is this rude? It's a pretty classic carbonara. Is this rude to be eating in front of our guests like this? Nobody showed up yet. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're Quick! Sharing. We're Quick sharing. before they're here! Yeah. That's fair. Give everybody a chance to show up. Let us eat. Someone's here, I guess. Ah! <laughs> I feel like I get the same effect with a burrito. When I eat a burrito. Yeah, editing on stream because we were late. Because we had some uh, technical difficulties. And because I misjudged my time making food. <clears throat> Although I did make finished dinner with uh, 10 minutes left to spare. Yeah, this is why we're late. Yeah, we're eating. It's okay though. It's fashionably late. My bowl's finished, so. No. <clears throat> I got through mine. Uh, Brianne, if you were there. I was busy with technical difficulties and making dinner. I would like something to wet my whistle. Same. Please, like like a, like a good amount of something. I don't know if he's got any left. Um, it was delicious though. I'll it get was, the recipe. We'll figure it out. It was spaghetti carbonara. Yeah, it was that. He, I'm on my way over here. And he texted me to tell me that he's making spaghetti, and I didn't even read the rest. I honestly got the spaghetti, and I knew exactly what he was going to say. He's making pasta, and he's going to ask me if I want any. He was like, legitimately, I read, I'm making spaghetti, and I was like, I already want it. I don't care what it is. <clears throat> Get here, and that's all I was waiting for. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, son. You ain't got to ask me if I want spaghetti. Yeah. I love spaghetti. Um... Not, not sp it wasn't spaghetti and meatballs or spaghetti and meat sauce. No. It was carbonara. If you're not familiar with carbonara, spaghetti, or I mean, what I, it can be whatever pasta shape you want it to be. It's usually with spaghetti or bucatini. Um, it's all the it, same. It, yeah, it consists of uh, bacon or some other cured pork. The sauce is made from egg yolks that are not scrambled. They gotta be silky smooth. Except this time. Yeah, I was I was in a hurry and like I'm not gonna make it in time, so they were just ever so slightly scrambled. Um, but so yeah, bacon, slow cooked eggs, pretty heavy on the pepper, and then finish it with parmesan. Uh, nice. Got a straight Viking hairstyle lately. Uh, so. I asked Liz to braid my hair for work the other day. Oh, dude, for real, I've had a lot today. They had like fried chicken at work. Scarfed down like four four legs. Mm. And then, so we've been doing. Did you say four legs? Yeah, four legs. Like chicken legs. Like four whole legs or just like drumsticks? Well, drumsticks. Okay, okay. I had two thighs, whatever. Two thighs and two drumsticks? Two thighs. Four, four drumsticks because <laughs> I had two and then I, I had two that. thighs with it and mm -hmm. then as I'm like walking away I grabbed two more drumsticks and I was walking and eating and I honestly had the theme song in my head of like I would walk 500 miles as I'm like taking a bite with each step That's I felt super fitting what well, a, it's, a, <coughs> it's a great love song 500 miles it's yeah. actually called something else it's called like I think it's called I Would Walk, but I always just call it 500 Miles because I feel like that's more fitting. That's what more people know is yeah. the 500 Miles part. Oh, of course. That was, uh, that was of course, Liz's Coming Down the Aisle song. She did the female version of that, which I loved. Do you think, technically speaking, that when they're talking, you know, 500 Miles, blah, 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 anywhere in the lyrics, do they mention that that's, like, a person? 
that they would walk 500 miles for? Oh, all the time, yeah. They say it in everything. Do they say it, it is specifically, like... For a person. There's no way that they could be talking about fried Just chicken. Just to be the man who would walk 500 miles and end up at your door. But he doesn't say person. Could be for a pile of chicken. What if it was for fried chicken? Depends. Was it created in Kentucky? I think they're Scottish. Oh. I'm pretty sure. I don't think Scots eat chicken. Not fried chicken. I think it's Scottish Brothers. Hmm. Um... That's curious. Artists do that sometimes where you're like, it totally applies to me. I just got through a breakup. And then it ends up being about, I don't know, like a pie that they dropped one time. <laughs> Name one. Name one song that was like that misconstrued. Any sort of breakup song no. <laughs> you're going to think. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. Um, they're talking about a dropped pie. Not LMFAO. It's like UFO or something. From the 90s. Um, oh, dang it. Uh, babe, help me out. It's the Chinese song uh, that you said to Aniston all the time, like when it talks about eating Chinese food. There's this... <sighs> there's this song, Son of a Biscuit. I gotta find it now. But it's like... Um, it's not what you expect it to be? No, so what it turns out, what it's actually about is, like, oh, something. Summer Girls. Summer Girls. I gotta play it for you, and then, oh, dang, I don't even have it in mind. I don't even have it on my, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, LFO. LFO. This song? Like, it's all uppity, like, up yeah. and poppy and stuff. And it's like, new kid on the block, something, something, something. I like that fish. I, I don't know the actual words. But, like, everybody's like, oh, my God, this song is great. And it turned out to be, like, about taking acid or something. And, like. Oh, there's a lot like that, man. Yeah, everybody thought it was like, oh, my God, this is a great summer anthem. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. We'll play it at Skateland. And, like, it turned out to be just the worst song for kids to be dancing to. Yeah. We had this little game at uh, one of my jobs. With the listening. Hide the Sausage? Yeah, of course. But <laughs> this is a different game. You know, we played a couple different games. And we listened to the radio while we worked. And the game was name that song, or, like, any time a song came on, is it a heroin song or not? Interesting. There's so many songs that are like secretly about like heroin. And... I could see that. Yeah. Um, you like listen to Soundgarden? Nikki Six did a lot of those. Oh yeah. Like I mean, he was drinking heroin through a fire hose. Yeah, they but... were they were a little more straightforward uh -huh. than some of those '90s bands. Uh, sad songs to go back to right now. I know it's on your playlist. Okay, here's one thing. Spotify. Do you know how long I slept on Spotify? Too long? Too long. When did you get uh, Spotify? When did you cave? Whenever I got my iPhone. So, like, I used to not need Spotify because if you have an Android... How long have you had an iPhone? I think I'm coming up on two years now. What? Yeah. I, I didn't know that you switched iPhone. sides. Mm -hmm. Made switch to an iPhone. Um... And got Spotify. Yeah, well, because, okay, so on an Android, you could download songs without permission, aka legally, and, like, save it onto your phone. And that's how I got all my songs. Okay. Like, yeah. you could go to YouTube, you could go to YouTube and right. find a song, save it, and, like, just turn it into an MP3 player. Right. Turn it into an MP3. For sure, yeah, yeah. I did that all the time, and I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of times right now that I'm so upset that I, because like there's some songs that are phenomenal that just aren't on Spotify yet. Yeah, I've come across quite a few of those. Oh uh, no no no! It was less than thirty seconds. It was less than thirty seconds. There's no copyright. There's no copyright. I can I can already tell you that was less than thirty seconds. You probably can't even make it out. 
Honestly. That was 12 seconds. And like... No real lyrics, it was just the sound. Like, I couldn't even tell what was being said, and I'm right here. Oh, you're talking about that. It was back in the day! Like, I've grown up since then. I wanted to go this whole podcast without yelling. Right. I had two things that I wanted to get you know through what? on how this. About a, how about a little forgiveness, YouTube? Yeah, come on! Yeah, turn the other cheek. People grow up. Like, I was just a kid two years ago in my mid-20s. Yeah, yeah. But, okay... Sorry, this is my formal apology. I'm sorry I was a bad guy, but like there's a Turn um, the other cheek and forgive us, bitch. <laughs> Turn that butt cheek. Um we'll edit it. We'll edit that part out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna highlight yeah, everything. Yeah, we're, you know. we're gonna highlight yeah. everything will be a highlight except for that. My bad. Well, no, screw that. Because like what? Because you got like are you going to come after me because when I was 14, I downloaded 5,000 songs off of LimeWire? No. Don't worry. I ruined computers with the viruses that I got from it. Like, justice was served. Yeah. You don't got to worry about that. But so... I'm so happy that my mom didn't know, like, to check folders on LimeWire. God, Connor really loves SNL. <laughs> don't watch those, Mom. There was like one time I was if actually it's a Saturday Night Live and it's an MP4. Don't open it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie though. There was one time you were showing me, you were showing me your Saturday Night Live stuff. You were sitting there going through it, and it was like, I'm not gonna lie, it was a weird moment because we were watching those SNL clips together, and then it was like the third video. <laughs> the third video was. Uh, Will Ferrell is Alex Trebek, and you were like, "Oh, that was just a real life." <laughs> <laughs> I just love it because it was like not SNL, not SNL. Will Ferrell is Alex Trebek, and you're like, "I just really like this clip." <laughs> oh my god, that stuck out so much. <laughs> Oh. No, no one has any clue. Oh, I know about that except for you and me. Oh, it was so, so good. So they have no idea why we're dying laughing. Oh God, I'm just. Who was somebody was talking to me about Alex Trebek? Like them having to have a tribute to Alex Trebek and Sean Connery on SNL. Yeah, I. It might have been me. I think so. I that. think we were talking about it. Yeah, because I thought that'd be cool because they passed away. Relatively around the yeah, same time. It's yeah. almost like Alex died of a broken heart. Yeah, almost. And prostate cancer. A month, life. maybe two months max between the two of them. Did they ever actually meet each other in person? Oh, I don't know. Man, I don't know. I'm having a real hard time thinking. My mouth is real dry. Like, yeah. Are you getting that too? I know. We're going to have to wait. Oh, man. She's in the bath. Oh. Well, we're just gonna die then. Um, no, so anyway, try not to make moist mouth noises. You gotta say, you gotta save up your spit. You know how to save up your spit? Oh, it's gotta go like that. It's a terrible sound. So, God, you're getting me on like four stories. Spotify. Right now. Let's start with Spotify first. Yeah. So, uh, I used to, I used to have. My old Android, where I'd have my song, I would get my song as the bad way. Yeah. And then when I switched over to iPhone, I couldn't do that anymore. Right. So I was like, oh, God. Like, they're super specific. Like, you either have to have iTunes or, like, you have to download an app. And so my go-to app used to be Pandora. But, Mm -hmm. like, if you typed in uh, Chris Stapleton, Tennessee Whiskey, you might not get Tennessee Whiskey on that first try. Yeah. And it's like, that's so frustrating. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, I think you had had Spotify for a long time. And so I was like, I've I've been a Spotify loyal, I think, for the last eight years. So I was like, all right, Mike, it's worked for him. I was like, I'll give it a shot. Um, I tried Spotify. I did the free one at first, where it was just like, there's a couple ads in between songs. It it wasn't that bad. Yeah. And then I just finally, like, fully committed to it. And now, I can't imagine not having my Spotify. Yeah. Like, so many playlists, so many songs. So so many songs. You can get podcasts on it, which honestly I've been thinking about trying to figure out how to get There's a Turtle in My Soup podcast. By the way, welcome to There's a Turtle in My Soup. 
15 minutes later. Yeah, yeah, we forgot to we forgot to tell y'all what's up, but uh welcome back to it. Um anyway, yeah, it was 15 minutes later. But uh you can get podcasts on there. Joe Rogan's on there now. I always love listening to Joe Rogan's podcast. Um Here's the other thing. You can get stand-up albums. So you can listen to like if you like Daniel Tosh, you can get his albums on there. Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah. Um, Jerry Seinfeld. I almost said Jerry Springer. But, like, all those things. You can get all their pocket. And I'm not going to lie. Like, when I'm in the car by myself, that's what I'm listening to. Really? Like, I'll jam out most of the time. But, like... <sighs> okay, so we took a week off. Um, last week... My grandfather passed away, and it's less than a year since my other grandfather's passed away. And then with just how, like, rotten 2020 has been to, like, everybody, you know, like, there's been a lot of good times. Like, lots of good times, but there's still been a lot of things that have happened that it's just like, oh, man, like, it just kind of drags sometimes. So... Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I, if I'm in the car by myself, I listen to stand up and get giggles out of it. And I feel like a crazy person, though. Like, sitting there in the car, dying laughing because I'm listening to Brian Hussein. <laughs> yeah. And it's also it's one of those things where, like, if I'm listening to, like, Glenn Beck or, like, somebody on NPR, like, I make sure the windows are rolled up. So, like, if it's summertime. And you see me with my windows rolled up, just know I'm listening to talk radio and I don't want anybody to judge me for what I'm listening to. Or I'm listening to a stand-up comedy album. If the windows are down, I'm blasting whatever music I'm playing. Yeah. And, like, you're all going to enjoy it. That's hilarious. It's, that's, how I, that's how I deal with things. I didn't know you were, like, embarrassed to listen to talk radio. Uh, <laughs> well, it, de- it depends because sometimes, like, Sometimes I go, like, old Jewish woman in a movie theater, and, like, you got to talk to the screen, you know? Sometimes yeah. you got to talk back to the radio, like, when they say something that you just find totally ridiculous, and you're like, no, you fool! It's because of this and this and this! Like, you get all like that, and then, you know, people start judging you, but, like, if the windows are rolled up, they just think you're talking on your Bluetooth. Where, like... That's the beauty of technology nowadays. Back in, like, the 90s, you couldn't do that. If you were talking in your car, you were crazy. I did have one good experience, because when I lived up by Chicago and I was more into sports, I've kind of calmed down in sports the last two years. Mm-hmm. But I'd listen to 670 The Score, and I remember... On AM? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember one moment, I had my windows down, and there was a dude must have heard what was going on. He's like, I fucking know, right? <laughs> and I was like, I fucking know, right? <laughs> Same level, bro. Yeah. So I've only had good instances of people judging me. I, well, because, like, the other thing is, like, listen to NPR, and first of all, whatever they're on NPR, are you, are you flexing your bust? Butterfly. Just a real quick butterfly stretch. Yeah, there you go. You gotta stay, you gotta stay loose. Yeah. But so, when you listen to NPR, it's always like this. And I honestly just want to know what that studio looks like. If they're, if they're, I would love to. You know, I actually would not mind uh, just talking like this for the rest of the podcast. Just make sure not to laugh directly in the microphone. I can't we're do gonna, that. you know, if we laugh, we're just gonna have to do a real quick like I'm gonna have turn. To, I'm gonna have to spin it. See, this isn't my style. That's why I was on like, NPR. Somebody was talking to me like this. I was like, I know. West, about four miles an hour. What is with you in the northwest? <laughs> Said. Coming from the southwest. Oh, it's coming from the southwest. But that would always be in the northwest direction, though. No. It's coming from the southwest, and it's heading northeast. That's true. Get a get a map. Wow. Never, <laughs> never eat soggy waffles. <laughs> Gotta love my chocolate soggy balls. Another classic SNL clip. I believe that was in your file. It, it, it was. I believe I saw chocolate salty balls in your I had a lot of uh, Saturday, Night, Saturday Night Live <laughs> clips. Oh, God. Um, you know what? No shame. <laughs> that needs to be in the loop. We're laughing uh, because <laughs> on our LimeWire back in the day, I was a you know young, 
Why was he you, you know? Are you about to NPR? Are we about to NPR talk this? Yes. You're about to NPR this conversation. Okay. So, on on (laughs) LimeWire, I would, you know, get all my music, and I would get some videos, too. Yeah, you could Um, get full movies on LimeWire. See, you're coming in whispering, I'm still yelling. I'll be back here. So, what I would do (laughs) is, uh, because I also enjoyed watching Saturday Night Live, you know, the old clips, so I would download these Saturday Night Live clips, and then intermingled in the same folder... Would be porn. <laughs> but I labeled them all Saturday Night Live and I would give them a little title. This, the level that this man went to, because it wasn't his computer. <laughs> it was the family computer it out in fa- the fucking living room. It was the family computer. Yeah, <laughs> totally exposed in the living room. <laughs> you can see it from... So many places. <laughs> you can see it clear from the staircase. So oh you were coming God. downstairs. <laughs> you saw. So, so okay. So Connor, we were look, we were going through his LimeWire stuff, and I don't know why, but I saw his SNL folder. <laughs> and let's, I go, let's have a good laugh. And I was like, oh, <laughs> SNL. And I went to pull him up. And he goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I was like, what? There's kids in the room. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, hang on, I'll show you later. And like, <laughs> I think we kicked out his little brother from the room. And <laughs> he, he goes through him, and yeah, it was not SNL. <laughs> it was like, he showed me one. It was porn. And I'm like, that's cool, bro. Nice. Like, <laughs> nice. And I was like, I realized, like, I'm watching porn with my best friend right now. <laughs> and he, like, clicked on another one. And then, like, on the third one that he went to click on, it was Sean Connery doing... <laughs> it was uh, it was Will Ferrell doing Alex Trebek on Jeopardy. And I think I just kind of turned and looked at him. He's like, this one's not porn. I just really like this clip. <laughs> So it was just like porn, porn, actual SNL with like a reasonable explanation to it. And it was just phenomenal. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. Oh, good freaking times. You never got caught with that though? No, never. <laughs> At least that I know of. Nobody brought it up with me. That's an awkward conversation to have. Like, hey, <laughs> get your dirty ass SNL. <laughs> That's something that like. Like you bring it up to your mom and like in a at like a family event where you know she can't yell at you and be like, Hey, do you know I had porn all over the family computers? And you had what? <laughs> okay, never mind, you didn't know. Get back here, get back here! Hi grandma! I'm gonna go talk to grandma. And then just dip out and then she, you can't get in trouble for it. Until they all leave and she beats you with a chancla. A chancla? Chancla. Dude, you had enough is, is your mom in any way, like, Hispanic at all? No. But I feel like you've had a lot of, like, you got a lot of, um, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to say Hispanic culture, but I feel like you do, like, you've got a lot of, um, because, like, you guys love Hispanic food. Yes. Both your mom and your brother have sugar skull tattoos. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like. And, and I will as well. And you'll have one too, yeah. so, like. A lot of Hispanic culture, like I figured, sometimes, like somehow, your mom has to have like some Latina in her somewhere. Man, I wish that would make my next job a whole lot easier. <laughs> Just the palest Mexican to come around. Yeah. Um, no, a chancla. It's a flip flop. Like that's what uh, a lot of Latina moms would wear flip flops, and when their kid starts yeah. acting up, they just smack them with a chancla. Oh yeah. My hero. I got a beer. I got a beer. I got a beer before oh you guys your drink. Yeah, I ain't drinking that. Uh, no, no, no. Don't worry. I'll take. I'll take the bullet on these. Anyway, chocolate. Left hand. Yeah, right hand. Okay. Wait, are we talking stage left or like your left? Because I meant stage left. Stage left. Yeah, I meant stage left. Ooh, you got caught. That you were looking up naughty stuff <laughs> on the family computer, probably. That would be Bree fetching us drinks to wet our whistle, because I didn't have time to grab a drink. <laughs> you know what, before man? Before we started, every boy growing up, once they find out that the internet is full of that stuff, they're gonna look at it. Absolutely, and they're not, they not gonna be smooth about not it. Not even just every boy. Every man. 
Oh, you're doing on girls. I'm talking girls. Yeah, girls I do know too. Damn well. I feel like. I feel like girls are in sh- like they don't get shamed for watching pornography as much as like a boy would. Like, it's it's kind of a double right. standard. If a guy watches porn and the girl catches him, it's it's bad. If a guy catches a girl watching porn, he's gonna be like, "What you watching?" Yeah. But like, I don't know. I feel like if. I don't know if I could watch. I don't know if I could watch porn with my wife. I don't think I could. Yeah. <laughs> Good old magazines. My grandma showed me a magazine when I was a kid. <laughs> my grandma showed me my first Playboy. No way. Hundred percent. Um. <laughs> I just had a million dollar idea. By the way, continue. This might get her in trouble. I don't know. This is my nana. Um, uh, she had a she had a Playboy with Pamela Anderson. Uh, it was Pamela Anderson's fourth time in Playboy. She looks like shit now. Man. Back oh then, gosh. she looked good. Um, but uh, curious, whatever. Um, but so my nana had a Playboy, and she had it. It was the one with Pamela Anderson on the cover, but it was, uh, it was, uh, like Dennis Rodman or something was like in the mix. So she got it for Dennis Rodman. So oh, like, okay. I, I looked at it for Pamela Anderson, but I just, I think it's funny that my grandma was the first one to show me that stuff. So one interesting fact about me, I have never in my life seen the inside pages of a Playboy. They have some good articles in there. I believe that. I fully believe that. But I just think that's an interesting fact. I've never opened up the pages of a Playboy and seen the inside. You you see them at the covers, like, when you're, like, I don't know, at a freaking newsstand or uh, when you're going through freaking Barnes & Noble. They do keep them there. I would yeah, just go straight to the comic section. Do a double take, but <laughs> yeah, I've never looked at a Playboy. I if you get a chance, especially now nowadays, they've actually cleaned it up a lot. Like they have way less. Uh, they have uh, yours was really bad. Could have caused some damage in the family. Just curious what a donkey curious. show was. <laughs> <laughs> um. Thank you. No, uh, like four or five years ago, um, four or five years ago, like, I think is when Hugh Hefner died. He's been gone for a while. He might might have been four years ago. But as he was going out, he was getting ready to hand it off to his son. And he wanted to, like, he wanted to kind of take out the, like, all the nudity. And he wanted to focus more on, like, he wanted it to be a gentleman's magazine. Yeah, okay. You know, I'm getting uncomfortable with this conversation now. Mm-hmm. You guys, you guys go ahead and you guys go ahead and start your own little porn podcast and you you talk about what porn you want to watch. Like real quick, while I have it on my mind, million dollar idea. We might want to cut this out of the podcast as I well. think we're going to turn off the whole fucking thing. <laughs> sure as shit going to tell my parents to stop watching this shit. Uh, million dollar idea. Why? I fucking am. Hasn't anyone made like a porn flip book? You know, like the you, want, <laughs> you, want, you want to see the, no, like the action shot. You know, you flip through. They did back in the day. And, did they? Back in the 40s. You know, you want to see the action shot. Um, Yeah, uh, we're, we're probably gonna be on it for a little bit. My, you still gotta finish your story. My elderly neighbors. I don't know what fucking story I'm on. <laughs> my, uh, my grandparents. They had like some elderly neighbors, and uh, one when the husband died, I can't remember what his name was, but when he passed away, I guess like they were going through their their stuff, and they yeah. found these like reels, like old school. Like, you gotta wind yeah, up and, right. like, project it. Right. 
I guess he had like like Super 8 style. Yeah, Super 8 style porn from like the 30s. It was, just, it was interesting because it's nice. like you never thought that it would have been filmed back then. Those bras like, were so pointy. I, it was the style back then. It was Madonna's days. I mean, Madonna's not. I'm saying not saying she's from 30s. the 30s, but like when she started her style, she was coming off of the 30s. I don't know. What story was I telling that I'm supposed to be telling? I don't know. We were talking about Spotify, and then we got on the yeah, and then we got on the LimeWire, and then the comment section got very uncomfortable. Yeah, I think we were just brushing off of the Saturday Night Live story. <sighs> I mean, we pretty much got. Oh, that. with uh, Sean Connery and uh, Alex Trebek. Do you know who's leading? Uh, they're still doing Jeopardy right now, and they got the the guy that's won the most money on the show. Ken something. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't remember uh, what his name is. It's Ken something. Oh, that, um, that was interesting. Hmm. That was interesting. Yeah, I don't know what that, that was. sound. No. It's a ghost. There's a ghost. That in was kind of odd. Ken Jennings, thank you. Sound like a camera. We're being fucking recorded. I told you she had. I told you she had to have fun. Christmas tree still up. My Christmas tree is still up. It's after your birthday, though. I know. It's good. See how long you can keep Just, it up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's my wife's text tone. She's probably telling me to go ahead and get comfortable on that couch in the background. Um. No. Oh, my dad asked what Spotify was. Spotify is a music app that you can download that you can get songs, like as many songs as you want. I think I've got, I think I have 1,600 songs on my list. Just let me uh, double check. It doesn't say how many songs I have. I have 117 hours and 35 minutes of songs on my. Nice. On my Spotify. Nice. So yeah, like, it's just a music app. Um, Would you like to develop an amp? I mean, no, honestly. But that was my issue with Pandora because, like, I would do the same thing with Pandora, where like I would listen to stand up. Yeah, Pandora frustrated me. Well, because one, you had the, like, it was always brand. I've, I've discovered a lot of great songs and a lot of great bands through Pandora, right, which is nice. Um, Sometimes I'm not in the mood for that. No. Uh, Red Wanting Blue is one of the bands that I discovered. And they have a song called My Name is Death. And it's an acoustic version. The guy, he kind of sing talks, but in it, like he's describing himself as the Grim Reaper. And part of the things, like part of the song, he says that uh, he wears the seven deadly sins upon his sleeve. And I loved that lyric so much that when I went and got my sleeve tattoo, oh, that's why. I've got the seven deadly sins upon my sleeve. So I always I, wondered why. I basically say, like, I am death. Trying to be a badass, but also colorful with fishies. Yeah. Because, like, I want to be tough. But at the same time, I like fishies. Yeah. So it was my cute way of trying to be tough. And that's... I kind of look at my tattoo now and like there's I wish I would have put more into it but I don't know what and now I'm just looking at this all this fresh free space fresh skin right here I'm trying to think about what I want to do I know I want to avoid this area yeah that area and this sucks, area man. oh it just sucks it's all bad anything elbow is not great but I'm dying for that um so Liz and I, wife and I, we uh, we uh, started this. I don't want to renew my virus protection. It's like it's telling you about your uh, warranty on your car. Do you know your car warranty is all renewed or whatever? It's like I, I got a lifetime bumper to bumper warranty. What are you trying to sell me? Yeah, yeah. It's like what are you trying to scam out of me? Yeah person from Ohio that mispronounces my name, even though it's really super easy. Yeah. Like, 
you say that your name is David with a very bad accent? David. Yeah. My name is David. Yeah. What? What's Connor's tats? Um, I got Jimmy Red. <laughs> this is a weird angle. Jimmy Red Corn. Oh my gosh, I can't do this angle. Jimmy Crack Corn? Jimmy Red Corn. And he doesn't car. care. On my Charge elbow, car. I've got nasturtium, this owl, and then I've got my ribs are all. That'll get you warded up. The dentist office if you do that. And my ribs are all warded up. Banned from a dentist office? Yeah, you're not supposed to show yourself. Um, his rib tattoo. I was actually there for that. Um. We uh, we were in a. I kept trying to get him to go to my guy. I was like, go to Adam. Mm -hmm. I was like, go to Adam. He's got a cool shop. I, I know. At the same time, like, my mom was like, go to my guy. Yeah, yeah, right. And I understand. You're gonna listen to your mom over me. That's fine. Right. At the time, you're gonna listen to your mom over me. He's learned since then. Uh, but so I'm like, all right, bro. Like, we're ride or die. So, like, I'll go with you. Where are we going? Like, what shop are we going to? Ah, it's in this trailer park in Milan. And I yeah. Was like, it, well, that, that was, was immediately sketched out. That was my freaking shock too. Like, my mom took me to go there and and meet him, and I'm like, we're in a neighborhood. Like, we're in that trailer park. And I'm like, where's this shop? That was peachy game book. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going looking for this shop, and we got, like. Turned into the trailer park of Milan, and I'm like, I am so fucking uncomfortable right now. I was like, I've heard nothing but bad things. Like, like this is every horror tattoo story that I've ever heard, and like we're just walking into it. It's like, it's like in a horror movie when the it was a little weird when the jock and the cheerleader are making out and they hear a noise outside, and the jock has to like. I'm gonna go check out that noise. And it's like, no, don't do it. Don't do it, you idiot. Like, that's kind of how it felt. And so, but like, to the guy's credit, he had everything. He had everything. Like, he, he was sanitized face. on everything. Yeah, he was he pulling everything fresh out. Fresh needles. Of, yeah, fresh um, bags, everything. It was all, it all seemed professional except for the setting. Yeah. Cause. What an experience. <laughs> I mean, to break it to you, I was in a, just a freaking foldable metal chair, hunched no, over. No, you were. You were in a chair like he was in a dinner chair. But you were in I a could, wood dinner chair. I was. I could lean over it though. Like my left shoulder went over the back of it. Yeah. Because I was. It was a shorter over. one. I was hunched over like that. Yeah, I'm freaking hunched over, losing circulation. They're playing Twilight like his kids. Oh my god. Because he's got little kids, and then he had like a 14 year old son that had a baby. The baby was crying, and him and his girlfriend were there and like arguing, like what is going on? And then they're sitting there trying to make dinner. Yeah. Like in this kitchen. And we were in the kitchen. <laughs> I was getting tattooed in the kitchen. Well, I'm Connor's getting this tattoo, and like the kids are acting like it's nothing. They're like, ah, you know, dad's making a living, like, whatever. What is going on? And dude's telling stories, and like I just remember, look, like I felt so uncomfortable because I had to watch Twilight Eclipse like twelve times. While Connor got this tattoo. And uh, we could have heard some dueling banjos. I don't know. They're probably swinging them at each other. But, like, I'm looking at Connor as he's getting this tattoo. And, like, I have a tattoo kit. When I go to get tattooed, I used to. Like, I've changed it up a little bit. But, like, back then, my tattoo kit was you get a monster and you get some Skittles. Because you need some, like, you need sugar to get through tattoos, especially if you're doing a long one. Yeah. Because, like, for people that don't have tattoos, you would be surprised at how tired you can be from like a three hour tattoo or even like a two hour tattoo. Yeah, like it can be exhausting. When you get out of there, you honestly feel like you just, you feel like you just went through a whole workout because you don't realize how tense your body gets. Like, like when I was getting my arm tattooed, I was trying so hard not to tense up my arm that everything else was tensed. And then when I would get like anything on my stomach tattooed, it was weird because like, 
like I got a tattoo up here and when I would get tattooed my stomach like would tense up like towards where it was going so like I would have to like flex before it like before he put the needle to me so like I'm sitting there with like flexing my abs for a whole like 20 minutes in between when he goes to, like get yeah, more ink right. on it but so when you're doing that you need energy and most people are like oh just take water stay hydrated nah you need sugar because you're going to burn off a lot of sugar doing this but uh I told Connor that I think you brought like a Gatorade or something you might have brought Gatorade or I actually water. don't think I had any sugar yeah you didn't have anything Plain. homeboy here brought a bag of Skittles just in case I was like, you and said a, you didn't want it. And a Mountain Dew, I think. I, or the guy had a Mountain Dew, maybe. He had a Mountain Dew for you. I had Skittles. And I'm sitting there, I'm watching Connor get tatted, and he just starts looking pale. Like, paler than normal. And I was like, looking at him, I go, buddy, you good? And he's leaned over, and he couldn't really, like, answer me. And I was like, hey. I was like, he's, he's, he's passing out. And so the guy stopped, and, like, Connor just kind of, kind of started to slump and we had to like open up the door and get him some fresh air and like started like forcing skittles in him and just trying to like bring him back up and he was only like he had like another quarter of the tattoo to get done like he made it a long like a long part like just with his with his shoulder up hunched over this chair miserable because like it wasn't there was like no cushion to the chair so I mean, it was just a hardwood chair and i wasn't being a bitch about it i wasn't like no, oh, no, no, no. you know i was just i was taking it but years later when i got my first two t tattoo from adam the same thing kind of happened and he informed me that it's my adrenaline kicking in he uh -huh. said one in four people just happens and it, after that time it's never happened again when I got that. Yep. Like, sometimes it just hits you. Like, yeah. it hits you really hard. And That's why it happens all at the start, too. Yeah. I don't think... I don't think I've ever passed out from a tattoo. I've... I've felt lightheaded before, but I think that was because I wasn't feeling the best. But, like, for the most part, like, I've, I've done pretty well, which... He said it was surprising because he goes, most big guys can't do that. Like most big guys, you know, you think they can just eat it and keep going. But he goes, he goes, some of them just struggle. And he goes, but you do a good job with it. The only issue he has with me is I'm a bleeder. Yes, you are. Like I bleed bad. And one of the tattoos that I had, one of the tattoos that I have, I was. Uh, Breaking the next floor. Uh, tell my secrets dude so i went out the night before i went out to the bar and i had a few drinks which if you drink before getting a tattoo your blood is thinner and it's less likely to clot and like i don't know there's some people that this shocks but when you get a tattoo you're actually being stabbed like you're being punctured by a needle thousands and thousands of times and it's supposed to be a small enough puncture that your skin kind of clots right away. But if you've been drinking, your skin can't quite do that because it's thinned out. So you tend to bleed more. The ink doesn't stick. Um, yep. There's a whole bunch that goes into it. Like the day before a tattoo, eat something good. Like I would honestly say kind of carb load. Drink a bunch of water and then you can go in like ready to rock. Drinking a bunch of water is pretty standard. You should just do that like all the time just always drink a bunch of water liz is killing it with her water drinking lately she's uh yeah. she got like a jug that has like the times on it like how much water you should drink by each hour yeah she's been killing it with that like i'm not gonna lie when i'm at work like i'll have like four bottles of water like 420 ounces so 80 ounces i'll drink those throughout the day or what i'll do is i'll end up like i go into work i slam a 20 ounce then go about my day, maybe sip on another 20 ounce later, and then I'll slam like the last two. And like what I want to know is, does it make a difference? Like if you slam, if you drink a gallon of water within the first hour of your day, are you set for the day? 
Good question. Because, like, it's all going to the same spot. It takes 20 minutes to filter water through your body. Like, I mean, I think it's like 20 minutes per... Maybe 20 minutes per uh, liter. It might be something like that. It takes okay. 20 minutes. That would make sense. But, like, I don't know. It's better to pack yourself so you are continually hydrated. But why? Right. Like, I mean, yeah, you can slowly give yourself water, but I don't know. Just weird thoughts that I have. Uh, but no, so we're trying to get healthy. We're trying to do better about drinking water. I got you totally off topic. About what? I brought up drinking water. That wasn't what we were talking about. We were talking about tattoos. Oh, oh yeah. You're, you're trying to get healthy, drink more water, though. Yeah, trying to drink more water, stay, um, flush our systems out better. But what we're also trying to do is we're trying to eat healthier. And, like, what our issue is, is when, like, when you want to make a meal, so, like, if you tell yourself, all right, on this day, we're going to do uh, these pork chops with, like, diced potatoes and some carrots and this and that. You go out and you buy, like, a bag of carrots, a bag of potatoes, maybe, like, right. a pack of pork chops where it has, like, either three or six, something like that. So, like, there's always an abundance and you have stuff left over that you don't always use. Yep. What Liz has found is a thing called every plate and what every plate does is you basically like pick a meal that you want and they send it to you with all of the ingredients that you need portioned out to either two servings or four servings so like for us like that's perfect because everything comes there you don't have to go looking for anything like it has things that it'll suggest things that you can add but like yeah. you don't have to like okay if you want to add something it'll be like add this or like whatever but um that was honestly our problem now what my problem is i don't know how to cook and like okay. it tells you it gives you step-by-step -step instructions of how to do this shit and still i find myself on youtube going like how do you quarter a lime how do you zest a lime oh buddy how do you cut a carrot diagonally? Like, I'm not proud of it, okay? Okay. Like, I sit there, I read these things, instructions unclear, dick stuck in outlet. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just, <laughs> I'm, pre I'm pretty dense when it comes to that stuff. And like, Yeah, that one get you. <laughs> I like that metaphor a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's honestly how I feel sometimes, is where I'm trying to figure this out, and I'm trying to, like, follow the instructions, but, like, somehow, oh, okay, here's the perfect example. So, we, we made, uh, like, we made tacos. We they, had, they sent us a taco recipe where you have, like, a whole onion... Um, pineapple, a uh, lime, uh, sour cream, and like garlic, and like some zest powder and things like that. But so, um, what? Still laughing about it. <laughs> Instructions unclear. <laughs> um, but so. Like one of the things that it tells you to do is it tells you it tells you to cut up uh like cut up into small pieces one clove of garlic. Well, it sends you a bulb of garlic. And I go, yeah. what the fuck is a clove? Oh, okay. So I'm trying to okay. figure that out. Like what is a clove? Like oh. what counts as a clove? Yeah, I'll give you that. Things like that. So I gotta look that up and then you gotta peel it. I've never had to peel like anything like that. Did you go through <coughs> and like rip it off? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll show you a better way to peel those, buddy. Or here, I'll just tell you. You know, when you have a knife? Okay. The the curvy side. Yeah. Have that face down on, on your surface. Is this where you smash it? And that's where you take your knife. Oh, so bitch! It, smash it like that, and then it just crushes, and the skin you can just... 
oh man, I've seen that in like a bunch of chef movies, and I've always wanted to do it. I didn't know yeah. that was my opportunity. Yeah, that was your opportunity. Son, well, there's another there's another recipe on there that I could definitely do that, and so I'm very excited to do that next time. But um, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing when you first do it and experience that. You're like, no way! What a cool little trick. Yeah. Because it really is a cool little trick. Um. No, so. Uh, one of the other things. So okay, so you had to cut up uh, clove garlic. So I'm sitting there and I'm trying to. I had like a, uh, like a, a puree knife, like a little, like a smaller blade. Pairing. Pairing knife. Pairing. Knife. I had a pairing knife that I was trying to cut up, and then I was like, you know, most of the chef stuff that I see, they've got a chef's knife. And so I go, I grab big boy. And I realized, I'm like, man, this is harder, though. Like, smaller, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I just don't have the right technique down. Like, I don't yeah. know how to chop. Like, I know there's the rolling technique, but I feel like with a clove of garlic, that's not how you want to, like, cut. You can use you can use multiple, a multitude of techniques. Oh, my gosh, I can't talk today. My speech impediment is really bad today. Sorry, it's everyone. Flustered. Well, I just have a speech impediment. Every day, regardless. Because he gets to teach me about food, and he's very excited. I am. When I get excited, it, it definitely acts up. Um, I gotta no. slow my speech down. So yeah, you could use so many different techniques, though. And usually, when you're picking a chef knife, you pick a chef knife that's shaped to cater to your technique. Um, my technique is barbaric, so I need yeah. like <laughs> I just need a fucking. Big old axe or just, something. Just curl your fingers and just be safe. <laughs> try not to really. lose, try not to lose the tip. Yep. But um, so I sat there and I cut up one of the cloves garlic and then I had to like cut the onion into thin slices and, and then I'm like going through the Proud instructions and part of part of the instructions was like to put sour cream into the small bowl and then to take a pinch of garlic. So I was like, okay. And I was like, well, I, was like, I don't know exactly how much pinch is, but I go to our, our spice cabinet and I find garlic powder. And I was like, I was like, that's probably like a pinch. And I was like, nailed it. And then I threw in the onion and Liz comes over and she looks at it and she's like, you idiot. And she goes, a pinch of garlic. And I was like, yeah, I, I did a little bit. And she was like, what you just cut up is garlic. Like, that's what you're supposed to take a pinch of and put it in there. It's like, oh. <laughs> I was like, God dang it. So, like, I'm doing so good, but then it's like I overthink this. Why would the recipe tell you to cut up a clove of garlic and then you use one pinch? I don't know. Like, like a pinch is going to be a clove. <laughs> well, that, no. Really? Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of garlic. One clove? That's a pinch. One garlic clove. Like a pinch. Like when uh, you've got like a little bowl, like a little sauce bowl of salt, and you want to take a pinch of it. That is not enough. I'm going to tell you right now that is not enough. You need to be two finger. Well, you're always using your thumb, but two finger to three finger. Really? On your salt. That's yes. a lot. It, you, you need it. Have you ever done the salt bay? You need it. So many freaking people under season their food, man. Frustrating. That's me. I no, I've, I've not done the salt bay because when you're wearing a chef coat, a real chef is getting salt down his sleeve chef. if he does the salt bay. A real chef? You're saying that dude's not a real chef? He's culinarily trained and he owns those steakhouses. Mm -hmm. I that know, I like hear like he charges out the ass for their yeah, steaks. Yeah, I mean, he's got nice cuts and they. I mean, he's probably a terrific butcher. And Do you think that's what it is? He's more a butcher than a chef? I'm sure he's considered... You could probably consider him a chef. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's like a chef-owned operation. Could you or consider just... butchers chefs? Butchers are not chefs. No. I mean, I'm sure they're butchers that are chefs, but when you learn to be a butcher, you don't just get classified as a chef once you achieve that. Do you learn how to butcher when you become a chef, though? Yeah. I, I think you have to know how to So you could technically be classified as a butcher. To a certain extent, I think uh, I think you have to be a decent butcher to be a chef. Um, you don't have to be a complete butcher to be a chef. 
there's parts of animals that I don't know how to break down. Like if you ask me to break down, um, you know, a cow's shoulder, there's so much going on. I want to be able to do it clean. But I mean, you got enough to get you by. Yeah. That's all. I just, I think it's interesting how like some of those things, like they intertwine, but they don't. I can't fully break down a cow, but if you ask me to break down uh, a pig, lamb, chicken, duck, all the birds, I can accomplish that. But a cow is, is a little bit out of my. Is that just because that's the only thing you really haven't got a chance to like get I, after? I haven't gotten the chance. Yes, um, and it's so rare that you you just have a half a cow. Usually, like if you ever order half a cow. It already comes up sectioned into primals so just never had the chance i feel like a rabbit would be very easy because yeah. it's kind of like a small game small well, game well rabbits uh in particular have the exact same anatomy as a cat and you know we've all gone through like what's science class in high school and kind of like dissected a cat so you you generally know um the fuck i did what i've never dissected a cat you never did no I dissected a frog in like eighth grade. It was some like biology three or like advanced AP bio or something like that. If there's anything AP, I sure as hell wasn't in or it. Or anatomy and physiology, some, something like that. I didn't do any of that. Like I did the class. bare minimums of high school. Yeah. Nobody else would dissect the freaking cat. Like I had to do all the work in my group because they were like, oh, ew. Excuse me out. It's already dead. It's not like it's not like they're asking you to slit its throat and drain its blood. Yeah. Like, as far as I know from actual, dis like, when you have to dissect a cat in science class, like, they come damn near chilled. Like, it's yeah. not like you got a warm body there. Like, no. Mm -hmm. they're, they've clearly been dead. They've been frozen. And you're kind of just... That smell of formaldehyde. Yeah. Ugh. Like, they've been preserved a little bit. Yeah. I've always thought that being a mortician would be an interesting job. Or, uh... You would never be out of work. Or an autop... Autop... What is it? Is it... Morticians do autopsies, don't they? No. Yeah. No, morticians just get the bodies ready. Or do they? Somebody help me. Because I'm trying to think. There's a there's a movie out it's called The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Yeah, I still haven't seen it. It's on oh my list. Oh my god. It is terrifying. But like these dudes, they own a morgue. And like that's what I always thought mortician came from was like morgue. Morticians right. work in morgues. Right. But like, morticians are also like at the funeral home or at the funeral place. Coroner. Yeah. Coroner. Okay. I think a coroner would be an interesting job. Like, I don't know if that says a lot about me, like, if it says the wrong thing about me, but like, I just think it would be interesting that, like, you got this body here, they died. Tell us how. And, like, you kind of get to play detective. Yeah. But, like, everything is right there. Like, you can find all kinds of weird things. I don't know. I just, I think that stuff is very interesting. Kind of like Absolutely. The, the ABCs of death. It's a video that I saw, like, when I was in high school or some shit. Yeah, okay. But, no. So, we've been doing the every, every plate. Um, I try to be, or every meal. I love where we went. You know, started the, started about like, cutting up a and clove. Then you, just, you just branch off of a branch off of a branch <laughs> off of a branch. And then I fall from that branch down to the first branch. But you catch, rack myself. yeah, you catch it right before you fully fall flat on the ground. And I'm back. Wow. Um, yeah, every. I want to hear more about this. every plate. Every plate. Every um, plate. Okay. We actually think you might really enjoy it. Um, oh, thank you. I am. I'll take that. Hey, are you a toaster? Because I want to stick my fork in you. Is that because we're shocking? Sweet. Yeah. I'll take that. Um, I'm into shockers. <laughs> uh, no, so it's one of those things where, like, it should be impossible to screw up. But if there's anybody that's going to screw it up, it's your boy. Well, fun fact, though. Hmm. Coroner is also the only person to be able to arrest the sheriff. It's a fun fact. No way. Interesting. Like, if the sheriff's doing something bogus and his deputies are like, hey, stop! I guarantee you they can still arrest him. You know, I don't think it's all that embarrassing that you just now learned what a clove of garlic is. 
you know, everyone has I to. I never be. once said that I was embarrassed, but thank you. Oh, you sounded like you were embarrassed. No, I'm not. Okay. You were then, like, I had to Google YouTube videos. Like, well, at, okay. at some point, so nobody knows what a clove of garlic is, and then no. they know what a clove of garlic is. I was talking to somebody at work about this, and they were like, your mom never, like, taught you how to do that? And I was like, not really. Like, most of the time, like, when I was a kid, I was outside. Like, right. I was outside. Be outside playing, playing, playing. Kyle, food's ready. Come inside, eat, eat, eat. Go back outside, play, play, right. play. Go to bed. Like, that was the thing. And then... No, but you still, like, learn stuff from your dad. Because I, I kind of, like... I learned, I learned grilling from him. Well, and I'm not and even just talking very cooking, that, but, like, like, certain life lessons and... and yeah, but I'm talking things. about kitchen stuff. Yeah, I know, but I, I feel like still... I feel like you were with him working on stuff more than like in the kitchen watching mom cook. Oh yeah, if he was out tinkering in the garage, I always like to come out. Right. I'm not gonna lie though, um, the stuff, the size of clove of garlic affect the taste. Yeah, I mean, well, it depends on how much garlic you're putting in it. Like, yeah, you're you're you putting need to know more. Your you're putting more garlic or less garlic, but I mean, when it comes to garlic, like. I mean, are cloves universal? One clove. I've never seen a clove big enough and then a clove small enough to be able to be like, that's really going to make a, a difference in the freaking dish. Yeah. Um, one clove, you should just feel safe doing one clove, regardless of size. It's not like it's not like chicken wings at B-Dub yeah. versus wings at KFC, like drums, drum size. Because I've always wondered about that, like, how do you get those little mini wings? I'm like, you see the size of a nut. Like, all I can think is, They're just nuggets. I'm eating a baby chicken. Is it bone on? Bone on, yeah. Bone on the wings. They're like this. They're not. They're not a full drum, but they're still a drum. But they're still a drum. Yeah. Like bone in chicken wings at yeah. B Dubs. Yeah. Versus a chicken drum. Like a chicken drumstick. Like they look the exact same, except one's just smaller than the other. Who's is smaller? A wing. No, from which place? B Dubs. They have the smallest wings, bone on. Bone I'm in. talking about okay. If you go to if you go to KFC and you order, um, like a two piece. Yeah. And you get a drumstick. Like you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And then, like a chicken leg, and then you get a, like a wing or whatever. A flat? Yeah, flat. And then you go to B-dubs, and you order wings, bone-in, mm -hmm. and you get a drum, like a drumstick one and a flat. But, like, they're not the same size. Why? Because they're taken from different chickens, I'm sure. But, like, what, like a baby chicken? Are you saying that like the proportions are wrong? Yeah, like one looks bigger versus the Honestly, other. Honestly, I, I wouldn't be able to. I mean, so they're coming from different like different purveyors, different farms of some sort. I mean, I, I know that's the explanation, but I guess I've never experienced this because I just always order flats. So I'm a I'm a total flats guy. I don't really do drummies, so. I guess I've never ordered drummies at both places and really noticed that. Like this, this is what I'm talking about. The size difference. When you go to KFC, you get like a full size. Yeah. But when you go to B-dubs, you get the mini version. Oh, it's... It's a baby chicken! Not necessarily. It just might be younger. Um, baby! No, they refer to it as uh, poisson. It's... Uh, it's the French made a word for it, and that's like... Of course the they only, did. It's just the only way to describe this, but I think it's a chicken... Leave it to the French! Something about a chicken at like 28 days old, something like that. It's just smaller. Yeah, immature. Basically, it's an immature chicken. I guess you could call it the teenagers of chicken. So maybe that's what it is. Just, you know... I don't know. It's one of those things that, like... Because not all chickens are the same size. Not all turkeys are the same size. Not all humans well, true, are the same size, you know? True, like, but... All, all these things are, are different. Like, the amount of 
baby wings versus regular size drumsticks is insane. Like, it just tells me that they're, like, they're getting to be, like, 13 years old, like, teenager style, and they're like, Dad, I want to go to the mall! And then the dad goes, screw it, you're going to the, you're going to B-dubs. And then that little teenage chicken dies, and I'm sitting there eating his wings, enjoying every bite of it. I love flats. What's your style to eating flat? Like, how do you eat a flat? Okay, so... The thing I love about a flat, too, is it tells, it gives me information on how good they are at cooking wings. I think the best way, if you're going to do wings, get a tray, throw them in the oven, 350, par-bake them, about a half hour. You're par-baking them, and then you fry them. And that's 350 you, for a half hour? 350 for about a half hour. You know, okay. you're, you're not like necessarily trying to cook them through you're just getting a little color on them bro them you need an air fryer just letting you know no and random thought. no because then when you fry them after the parby that's when you get like the fall apart wings so i like a flat because even if like you know you get the best drummy you try to get it all in one bite it's kind of hard and then you, you'll get the tendon and like that's not enjoyable but a flat you take it from one end, and it doesn't really matter which end. If it's properly cooked, you dip it, and you freaking bite all the way to your finger, get a hold of the bone, clamp down, and you just pull it out, and you get all of it in one bite with no, like, no stupid stuff. It's a, just a pleasant bite. A flat That's is... That's why I like a flat. A flat is the, the wing that it's, has, like, two bones It's like on the, the bicep side. of the chicken. You know, you got the wing tip, which would be the forearm and hand. No, so it would be, like... It would be like a forearm because you got two bones. No, it's yeah. No, this no. is the drum. Kyle, this, this would be the drum. Kyle, the drumstick is from the leg. I know, but I'm talking about like bone wise. Like your your bicep, you have one bone right here. Your yeah. forearm, you have two bones with meat in the middle. That's a flat. Okay, so listen to me for a second. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I had to Chickens listen. don't technically have biceps. It's like I know that. I'm talking I'm talking I fucking hate you sometimes. No. So let's talk shins. Okay, fine. Uh, okay. The flat would What would be the what flat be on to... your leg? What would the flat be of your leg? It'd be my calves. Okay. So this is the calf of your arm. You're just using this as an example because let your me, leg's not. Let up me here. finish, okay? I fucking hate it here. Let me finish. <laughs> Technically speaking, chickens would not have the bicep piece because they only have the two joints. Well, you're breathing all heavy. So the flat is the forearm, and then the wing tip would be the hand. I just call it the bicep of the chicken because it's the meatiest part of the arm. It's the one attached to the shoulder. That's why I call it the bicep of the chicken. But really, it is the forearm because it has the two bones. Okay but it's the meatiest part of the chicken's wings because they don't have the bicep. That's why I call it the bicep of the chicken. Because it's attached think, to the... I think because it's a, have more meat. I didn't realize we were talking about more meat. That's what you just said! You said that a flat has more meat than a drumstick. A drumstick is not from the arm of the chicken. What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm so confused right now. They're called chicken wings, but one of them is not from the wing. The drumstick is from the shin down. Or like below below the thigh. Oh. You've got the thigh, the chicken thigh. The drumstick is the second, the bottom joint. I think I know where you're coming from. Of the chicken's legs. What are you talking I about? I was about to leave. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what we're getting at here. This got this got heated. You guys I'm just, so confused. You guys just witnessed an argument between Chef and Turtle. It got pretty intense. I don't know. I don't even know where we're at right now. Why are we describing this? I don't know. Oh, because my mom wanted to know what a flat was. I thought you were trying to tell me that. She was sorry, it. didn't mean to, Didn't mind for you to fight. <laughs> we're not fighting, all right? The kids think we're fighting. Mom and dad are fine. No, okay, so, okay, no, 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 okay, explain to her, I, you know what, right, I'm just going to listen, explain to my mom what a flat is, let me hear your explanation, because I interrupted you, On I'm the sorry. chicken, it is the piece 
It's on the wing. It's the first joint. It's okay. attached to the shoulder with the tip cut off. That is what the flat is. Okay. Okay, I see exactly what you're saying now. Never mind. I apologize. Okay. I jumped, I jumped the shark on that one. I thought you were... We're okay. on the same page now? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. I thought... I thought we were. I thought you were trying to explain it as like a bone thing, and I feel like a fool. I'm a, I'm sleeping. Oh, because it's now. like definitely it's two pieces, like our forearm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so that's what the flat is. Is that's where it comes from. But like as far as like when you eat it, it has the two bones in the middle, and that's how he said like to like pull your teeth. What I do is, if it's small enough. I throw the whole thing in my mouth, and I kind of just like bite on it, Ow. and I push my tongue through the middle. Like, do you know how to tie a cherry stem with your yeah. tongue? Yeah. Can you really? Yeah. Fuck you. I can't. I've tried, and I always swallow it. I feel like it's like gum in like seven years. I'm just gonna poop out a bunch of cherry, cherry stems. stems. <laughs> how cool would it be if they were knotted? <laughs> if they got all knotted? <laughs> yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> They come out like <laughs> they come out like a monkey arms or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, that's what I do. I put the whole thing in my mouth and I just kind of like push my tongue through the middle, break off like, and then I do the peel though. Like, but I make sure that I get that meat, I get that meat out of the middle, and then I then I strip it. Yeah. But like, I only do that. See, like when I get wings, I don't. I never get hot wings. Like I don't like hot wings. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, I can do, um... Well, you're not a spice guy, really. No, no, no. I can do, like, a little bit of spice. Like, I can handle, um... I can get into, like, the yellows at B-dubs. Okay. Like, I can get into that. What's a yellow? Describe a yellow to I me. I think, like, Asian zing or okay, something. A okay, 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 okay. Um, yeah. That's always a go-to, by the way. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Um, Asian zing and then something else. There's another one that's up there that's like a habanero or something. Mango, mango habanero? Yeah, mango habanero. I you, can do that. You can do it I can do comfortably? Habanero. I don't get all mango habanero, but like I can get a couple and it still tastes good. Okay. Like mango habanero to me still has good taste. So well, I can handle that. That's honestly, in my opinion, I've had all their ones that are higher than that. And it's the only good one out of the spicy ones. Yep. Like that one... It's the most spice, but still like some of the best flavor. Yeah, if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna do spicy, like if I'm gonna get like 12 count or something, then I'm gonna do, um, do chickens have teeth or lips? I don't have either. If chickens had lips, that would be pretty freaking disturbing. This is what our podcast means to us just sitting here balking at each other. If, if, if chickens had lips. <laughs> Welcome to There's a Turtle in My Soup podcast, where we ask the hard questions. No. God. If chickens had lips, they'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine like a, a chicken running around and just bum, 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 <laughs> sound like an old jalopy. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Oh my gosh. I always thought chickens did have teeth though. I thought chickens did have teeth and it was because of um <sighs> there was a cartoon when we were a kid. It was the Robin Hood the Robin Hood cartoon. Are you talking about Foghorn Leghorn? No 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 no. Not him. No, the Robin Hood one, the Disney one, where Robin Hood was a fox. Yeah. And it had that song. Do 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 do. Right. Boo do do boo boo do boo. Great song. Did that, and like I always thought you had to have teeth to whistle. And so I just thought chickens had teeth because of that. Yeah. They've ruined uh, TikTok. TikTok has ruined my childhood. Just gonna scream that at the top of my lungs. Somebody went and watched all of our old childhood movies. Like they went and watched Winnie the Pooh and Jungle Book. Small Soldiers? No, no, no. 
Oh. Older than that. Yeah. Jungle Book and Winnie the Pooh. Okay. I went and watched that. It's the same animation, just with like different characters. Like everything is exactly sim, like with the movement and everything and how the camera plays. It's all the same. They just changed like who the characters were. So like Boogaloo, when he's like dancing around doing something, it's like it shows it next to Winnie Winnie the Pooh and he's doing the exact same thing. Okay. Um, like 101 Dalmatians, the cartoon, and uh, like Fox and the Hound or something. Like things like that. And I was watching that and I was like, you lazy bastards. It made me like dislike Disney just a little bit more. I'm over Disney, bro. I'm honestly going to, hold on, before that segue into what's going to be Star Wars, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to be laughing for a couple days about if chickens had lips. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be laughing about that for a while. You're just going to have a random moment of silence. You're just going to go. <laughs> and yes, I want to talk about Star Wars. Welcome to the nerd portion, where I want to talk about Star Wars. I want to talk about uh, Justice League, all these things. The number one thing yeah. I want to talk about right now is how freaking soft people have gotten lately. Yeah, nerd talk, and then we'll get into the weekly poop talk. I thought we were going to try to avoid that. Oh, we are going to avoid poop talk? Okay. I mean, I already kind of touched on it because I talked about poop and cherry stems coming out in a knot. Yeah, but we didn't really Have you ever heard the rumor it. about if you swallow a quarter and, like, if you fish it out of your poop, George Washington's face changes to, like, <laughs> because of the journey that he went through <laughs> no, I've never seen that I was hoping you were going in a direction like kind of similar to when you're at the zoo and you put a penny in those machines and it stamps it I was hoping that you were going in that direction <laughs> like you swallow a quarter and then like it comes out like do you know what I'm talking about like, yeah the zoo stamps I think I I think I actually have one in my wallet from when we went to Chicago like that was our wedding token. Well, I thought you were going in that direction. What, like your, all... your colon's going to stamp it on the way yeah, out? Thank like, you yeah. for coming! Like your colon stamps the uh, the quarter, just like at the zoo? What shape just would gonna, it be? just going to trademark this. What shape would my butt hold? Chocolate starfish. It would be a starfish stamp. Heading right out. We got the... really close to not talking about poop this week. You did it! Don't ever let him say that I'm the one that always brings this shit up. Alright? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I was doing so right. good. What were we talking about before we got dove into the obligated poop? Uh, we're going to talk about how soft people are nowadays oh. and how they're ruining great things. I mean, I understand. Okay. No, I don't. I, I don't. Kiss my ass. I don't. Yeah. All right. For those of you that are not up to speed with Star Wars or... Um, social media or PC culture or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's There's it a show. You gotta watch for it. You you gotta watch what you say. And we're doing this where we probably cross. I, I know I definitely cross that line on the daily. Like, um, saw something today on Facebook. Do you hear about Fort Worth? Do you hear about Fort Worth, Texas? What about it? They had a hundred car pile up. On one of their interstates, a hundred car pileup. I did not. It is not good. I I made this joke before I found out everything that was about it. I made a terrible joke where somebody like shared a meme of like um, Belgium has waffles and whatever, whatever. What does Texas have? And everybody's like toast. And I was like car accidents. It was like they had, uh, it was like after a frost or a uh, slick rain or something, and they had a 100 car pileup, but yeah, 35 it's... people ended up passing. Wow. And the video of it is, it is terrible. Like, you see it, I mean, people are doing 65 miles, 70 miles an hour. I want to say 65. I know they're doing 75 down in Texas on those interstates. Like, there is no speed limit in there. But I mean, it's semis, it's SUVs, it's trucks. And they're hitting these cars that are stopped at 75 miles an hour. And they're just, bow, blasting through it. It's a terrible thing. But I have the, I have one of the darkest senses of humor. And that's how I get through my dark times. Like, you just have to laugh at the things. I'm not laughing at the deaths. But, like, 
you have to try to my my theory is my coping mechanism is to try to try to make a joke laugh it off and it's not always tasteful but that's my grieving method some people go out and get plastered some people go out and do drugs some people go do whatever me i tell jokes it might only be funny to me but that's how i deal with it that's what i got from my professions like that's how you learn to deal with shit like sue me i'm sorry but anyway you have some people out there nowadays that they don't they they can't handle that and if you say something that offends them right then you're you you need to be removed and um gina what is her last name corona corano corano gina corano is on a show on disney plus called the mandalorian if you have not watched The Mandalorian, get on it, because it is a great show. Well, especially if you're somewhat of a Star Wars fan. Oh, you don't even have to be a Star Wars fan. I mean, like, right. it helps to understand things, but as far as, like, storytelling goes and, like, the visuals of it and just things like that and tempo, phenomenal. Like, it does a great job of telling a story. Um, I was binging through like the first five episodes of uh, the second season because like I missed the first one so I was binging the first five episodes and like as I was watching it I would like sink lower into the couch but like more forward like I would go more turtle as I was watching it and Liz noticed that she's like Kyle what are you doing and I like had to snap out of it and be like oh what's that and like I realized how bad my back was but like that's how invested I was into the show what are you giggling at? Chicken's head lips. Oh my god! <laughs> Instructions unclear. Dick stuck in socket. Chicken's head lips. They'd be all Fuck. like... Fuck. <laughs> you oh. broke him, Dad. Yeah, that was so you good. You broke him. Oh, that was so good. Way to go! What a segue. But, but so, yeah, uh, anyway. So, Gina made a tweet. Where she talked about how, um, and actually she she made a, 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 I don't even know what to call it, a statement. But she basically said that back in the 1930s and 40s, when the Nazis wanted to get the Jewish people, they turned the Jewish people's neighbors against the Jews. And to the point that the, the neighbors of the Jews hated them enough that they would go and turn them into the soldiers. And she said that it's weird that people do that nowadays based on somebody's stance on politics. Right. Something along those lines. Like, I'm loosely, I'm loosely quoting it. And I don't even think it was her words. I think it was just she shared a bit, like, a picture or, like, a screenshot of somebody else doing it. And... Um, they decide like Disney decided that that's the straw that broke the camel's back, and they go, she's mocking the Holocaust and everything that the Jewish people have gone through by trying to compare Republicans versus Democrats. Like she's um, she's basically like making right. a mockery well, of this, and she needs to go. Yeah, ultimately they made the decision because everyone that like I understand where she's coming from when she had said what she said, but they look at that and they're like are you seriously comparing the republican party to genocide and like that's all they see and so yep. like and now she's done though but yeah. like i loved her character i thought she had a great character i mm. thought it i thought it was a good it wasn't like a main character by yeah, any means i loved her but it was a good and accent character and everyone on the show loved her as well but apparently she made other tweets back in yeah november it, yeah they wanted to get rid of her then for but like her her tweets back then weren't even well she was a trump supporter and and they i don't know like something didn't well didn't what i've pieced her. together what i've pieced together from that is she was a trump supporter but disney is not so what is trump he republican yeah so biden's democrat so yeah <laughs> i'm like, I know politics, but I don't pay attention to parties. Like, yeah. I, I hate the party system. I hate two-party system. Oh, I'm with you. But, so what that tells me is Disney backs 
Democrats, which if you watch Jimmy Kimmel on Late Night on ABC, that dude, he rips Trump apart, and like, or he tries to rip Trump apart in the most childish ways, and like his monologue is just, uh, it's not funny anymore. Like, there's really nothing funny to it. Like, he gets on there, and all he talks about is Trump's impeachment, this and that, and it's like, it's, to me, it's more like schoolyard bullying. Like, it's not funny. Mm -hmm. But he gets on there, and he goes on these tangents, and it's like, so that tells me that, okay, if you don't back Biden, then you're out. And that's what they did with Gina, where they go, okay. Yeah, I mean, might have been. I That's what I was reading, is that they were annoyed with her over political stances it was political stances yeah, and, and they like, were kind think, of looking for reasons to get rid of her back uh -huh. um, while the election was going on but so after she made this tweet like about um the uh how the jews were treated uh a hashtag came on twitter like hashtag fire gina and it worked and yeah they got her out and it's it's weird to see how it's weird to see how strong of a voice the internet has nowadays. Yeah, man. One of the best examples of it is the Sonic movie. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. So, for those of you who, that don't know who Sonic the Hedgehog is, it's a video game character that eventually got made into a cartoon, and then yeah. two years ago or a year ago. They were doing two two years ago. They were gonna do a live action movie, and the first trailer dropped. Everybody was pumped. You know, they had a bunch of teaser stills of what Sonic was gonna look like, and then or of uh, like his shoes and his fur. And then when the trailer hit, there was like a minute of build up of this blue streak running around, and then it like the Showed reveal, yeah, the reveal of his face and. The internet lost their mind at yeah. how this hedgehog looked, and right. they hit, they hit Twitter, they hit Facebook, they hit all of it, and they bullied, honestly, they bullied the production company to go back in and re-edit everything. I had one of those comments too, by the way. At whatever point in the video, <laughs> when his face shows, my comment was that timestamp. Now how am I supposed to sleep tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I did have a part. Well, because like you have you have this image and like you want it yeah. to be this way, and it's like you're making this movie for us, right. so listen to us. And to me, what's crazy is but nowadays, it was it was a petition. Like they had a petition going. Oh, they had a petition. They had, a petition. They, they had hashtags for it. Though. I didn't sign the petition. Like I would have. Okay, but seen it regardless of his what is a, what is a petition though? Like it was a, it was an online petition. It was an online petition. So anybody could just right. put down two hundred fifty names. Yeah. yeah, you just click. You could you could fake that so yeah. easily. So it's John not like Smith, Jack Smith, Michael Smith. I'm over the Smiths. Go to the Johnsons. You know, like <laughs> I just do that. Johnson, Johnsons, Johnson and Johnson. No more tears. Yeah. We're getting there. We got Jimmy Johnson, Timmy Johnson, Tommy Johnson. <sighs> We've got Harry and Jerry. Let's fucking do it. Yeah. But so, uh, no, it's just, it's surprising to me at how strong of a voice, like, today has over the internet. Over the internet. And it's like. But they don't use it for, they don't use it for a lot of productive stuff. stuff. Yeah. Like, let's talk the about the stuff. fact that um, insulin and EpiPens. Insulin and EpiPens are still in the high hundreds of thousands of dollars for people to get. Yeah. And you're and yet instead of being like hashtag cheaper healthcare for those that can't help it or something along those lines, they're going hashtag fire Gina. Yeah. <laughs> Change Star Wars <laughs> when half of those kids that are hashtag and fire Gina probably need their insulin. Yeah. It's just hashtag the Mandalorian is Star Wars most redeeming factor. Let's create a plot hole. <laughs> How are we gonna get rid of this woman? Yeah. She's gonna get eaten by a sandworm. What? Off camera. Wouldn't be Star Wars if we didn't have a plot hole. It wouldn't be new Star Wars. That's true. I mean I mean honestly, I like who, satisfying as old Star Wars when you go back and rewatch. Who was it that uh directed the second one? Joss Whedon? No, uh, Ryan, 
Russo. Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson. They're going to let no, Ryan... No, Josh, Josh Sweden's in the news for, like, everyone's coming out against him and saying how shitty of a person he is. Oh, is he? I haven't read any of that. What's going on with that? The Marvel guy? Josh Whedon, the president of... Is it? Is he now president of DC Comics? No. He was in, in Marvel. I think he's... He was Marvel. He didn't go to DC. I think his job now... Well, no, no, no. He went to DC to do this, uh, Justice, Justice League. League. Yes. And he ruined that! Yeah, so... What Bet is, I'm going to yell about that. What's happening is... Uh, God, what's what's the guy's name that played Cyborg? Ray... Uh, oh, I can't remember. Ray... Finkel. Ray. His name's Ray. He's the guy that plays Cyborg in Justice League. He just came out and, like... I'm going to paraphrase quite a bit. Pretty much said in a very polite, professional manner that Joss in Whedon... In a PC way. Yeah, that Joss Whedon straight up sucks and is kind of a shitty person. <laughs> He pretty much said that, and then you have all these actors and actresses that are coming out and, like, tweeting their own experiences, like the, I don't know, actress from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like, and they're talking to him, pretty much saying, like, this dude fucking sucks. But how, though? How does he suck? Like, are we talking Stanley Kubrick um, making uh, Sherry whatever cry by doing 120 takes on the stairs swinging a baseball bat kind of suck? Or, like, like, what are we talking about here? I don't know, just that he's... Because that's why I, I hate that. You jump on the... Like, not you. I'm sorry. But, like, people jump on this train and right. they're like, he's a bad guy. Yeah, he is a bad guy. Right. Why? I don't know. And especially on the internet, which mm-hmm. we're even talking about. Um, no, they haven't said anything specific, but they've talked about how unprofessional he is and uh, how disgusting he is. They say disgusting quite a bit. Unprofessional, <sighs> disgusting... See, now, if you're going to talk to me about a disgusting director, like, my question will be, are you talking John Winters disgusting? And they're going to be like, well, this is John Winters. I'm like, yeah, go Google that guy, and you'll find out how disgusting a director can be. You're going to read something on Google and then be like, fuck John Winters forever. Oh, my God. John yes. Winters. That's would, what we do. John Winters would eat up that hashtag. But think about that. Is Stanley Kubrick still alive? No, he's dead. Oh, I don't know. It, think about, like, if they tried making The Shining right now. Like, okay. how they made The Shining back then. Where he had, um, he was deliberately ruthless to Sherry. I cannot think of her name. If anybody out there can tell me what the mom from The Shining, Sherry something. If anybody can tell me what her name was, I would appreciate it. Oh, what a horse face. She didn't have a horse face. She had big ass eyes. She had kind of a horse face. But um he like was deliberately ruthless to her to make her be so on edge so that her performance would be as like thorough as possible. And like nowadays, if somebody were to videotape that on on a cell phone That's true. and put that out there of like him just being a dick to her. Stanley Kubrick would have been canceled immediately. And it's like, think about all the things that you, that you would have missed from Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. Or like, I'm sure Martin Scorsese has had some pretty bad moments in all of his years. I also think it's adorable that Robert De Niro calls him Marty when he talks about him in conversation. Like, everybody else is like, so Martin Scorsese, or they'll call him Scorsese, but Robert De Niro, because he's done like 20 films with him. Yeah, he goes, right. He goes, so when Marty calls me up and talks to me about this film that he wants to do, I go, yeah, Marty, that sounds great. And it's like, oh, you guys got this cute little that romance. Cute. That's adorable. That's adorable. And it's like, all I can imagine That's is that he adorable. calls him Bobby. Yeah, I, Yo, Bobby, it's Marty. I hope Martin Scorsese <laughs> calls Robert De Niro Bobby. <laughs> That's what I want out of life. I'm going to go on a guess, and I'm going to say it's Sherry DeVille. Duvall. Sherry Duvall. Duvall. I think that's right. I mean, that really makes sense. I mean, if you're a director and you don't think that the actor kind of has the gusto to accomplish what you, what they need to accomplish, then you, like, you use kind of these shysty tactics to put the pressure on them, change their mood, get them into form. Shelly Duvall. I was so close. Shelly Duvall. Shelly Duvall. She, uh, yeah, she was tortured by Stanley Kubrick. And that's what most of the times, like, if you look that stuff up, that's what you hear is that she was just a 
obliterated by him. And that's if Josh Whedon. The only problem I got with Josh Whedon is he ruined Justice League. Speaking of Justice League, we have like a month, and then the Snyder Cut comes out. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so man, I'm not really looking forward to it. I need it. How much better can that movie get? Well, it's gonna be four hours long. That's crazy. Four hours. And you complain about Lord of the Rings. You're like, I'm not gonna watch a movie. It was boring in the first forty-five minutes. Like the first forty-five minutes were so boring. So good. No, I can't. It's so freaking good. Like maybe now that I've matured a little bit, like maybe I can get back into it. But I just, oh god, it's so boring. I tried watching Lord of the Rings when I was like eleven, maybe, maybe a little younger, and damn, I watched like thirty to forty minutes and I was out. I passed out. I woke up and the movie was like on the menu screen of the DVD and. I was like, this movie sucks, and I never watched it. Never, never watched the sequels. I played the video games. I thought the video games were cool, but and I've tried watching Hobbit. I still haven't seen those. I, it's one of those things too, where like I've come across the books. Like I've come across the books of them, and I've tried to pick those up, and I still I just cannot get behind that. I didn't realize how old. How old Lord of the Rings is. Oh, yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. That's like from forever ago. Yeah. Fascinating, really. <sighs> but and it makes me wonder, like, what if they tried to make that back in, like, the Wizard of Oz age? Like, would it have had... You know, that's a movie that I'm surprised they haven't tried to remake. Wizard of Oz. Well, they did The Wiz. No, no, no. I'm talking about a full-blown remake of Wizard of Oz. Like, Anne Hathaway as Dorothy. Yeah. I'm surprised that they haven't tried no, to do it. No, they would probably go younger than her. Now, yeah. Uh, now. I yeah. don't know any young actors, actresses. Uh, I don't either. Did they, did they drop that now? Is it just all... Because all, it used to be females were actresses. Yeah. But I think like they're all just called actors now. Yeah. I've just always kind of said that just because it's quicker. Two syllable oh, versus three. On. Yeah. <laughs> Save me some effort. Yeah. Rrr. No, I am very excited for the Justice League to come out. Um, I've been dying to watch that. Because, like, I am a very big DC fan. I love comic book stuff in general. But um, if I had to pick one, DC is where I'm going. Uh, and that's just, that's my preference. Leave me alone if you don't agree. But, um, dude, I had this, I thought about this, this was a couple years back, um, when I was just a line cook working as a sous chef, we were talking about DC and Marvel, and I talked about my preference for DC, and he's like, they're close for me, but I think Marvel's artwork uh, just is what does it for me. And I'm like, that's the stupidest comment I've ever heard, because one, like, artwork is dependent on whatever artist is working on the series at the time. Mm -hmm. Two, there have been so many artists that have gone between both series. Oh, you yeah. Dumbass. Um, well, and then, like, anybody that wants to... How mind-blowing is that? I think it's funny, though, because, like, even Marvel has made fun of themselves in the Deadpool movies. Um, there was a Marvel artist who, he did a great job drawing every part of a character until he got down to the feet. Yeah. <laughs> and he drew, like, you'd have this huge, jacked Captain America with muscles on top of muscles everywhere. And it was like, damn, he thick boy what the fuck is wrong with them feet <laughs> like like imagine me with a size three shoe like yeah. it just it was like what happened you were doing great 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 <clears throat> shit yeah. the bed peg legs no no the calves look great it was the feet and in deadpool one or two i think it was i think it was two where he's like yelling about something and he goes Probably from some guy who can't draw feet. But it's like, it's such a jab at Marvel. And it's like, yeah. that's what I love about Deadpool is that Deadpool has no bounds. Like, he just does whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. But, um, no, this is the other thing. Okay, so you can, this is the other part that bothers me about these Star Wars nerds. Actually, I bet you it's not even Star Wars nerds that started that hashtag of Fire Gina. But, 
we have this power out there on the internet to go out there and you hashtag something. You hashtag fix Sonic, and within a year they fix Sonic, and it costs them like an extra two million dollars to mm -hmm. go in there and fix his eyes. And I never checked the numbers to make sure that it actually like played out in their benefit. I hope that it did, but um, uh, nobody has hashtagged give me Nightwing, and it makes me furious. Because at the end of The Dark Knight Rises, they set it up perfectly with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. They do. He gets I forgot all of that. his stuff. He gets all of his Batman equipment. He gets all of his money. He gets the mansion and everything. And he just sets it up that he would... And he looks like Nightwing! Yeah, he does. Like, come on! And then his name was like... Richard Blake or something. Dick Blake. Dick Grayson. Like, uh. And then they're like, oh. I like your middle name. I like your I like your middle name or maiden name or whatever the fuck it was. Middle name. Robin. And it's like, and he just kind of smiles all smug and walks away. And he goes to and he goes spurlunking in Wayne's cave and finds all the equipment. Spurlunking? Yeah, dude, it was spurlunking. Spelunking. Spelunking? There's no R. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start the sport spurlunk. Spur I like to spurlunk it. <laughs> That's me trying to like sound like I know what I'm doing. Like, yeah, you know, I was out spurlunking the other day. I had to scrape my knee pretty bad. <laughs> like spunking. Shut up! Spelunking? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but no, dude, give me Nightwing. Nightwing's always been my favorite. Like people ask, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite superhero? I'm like Batman. And they're like, oh, I'm like not the Batman you're thinking of. Oh wow. Yeah. Who's your favorite character? Who's your favorite? Batman. Who's your favorite superhero? Batman. Which Batman? Batman, Batman. So Bruce Wayne. When I say Batman, I'm you mean talking Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. Okay. Bruce Wayne. Mine was mine is Dick Grayson. Although I will say. My favorite. Batman and Robin moments is Dick Grayson, is with, Dick Damian Grayson with Damian Wayne because those two antagonize each other, each other so, so much. much they hate each other but they're so good together Ugh. they're freaking hilarious um have you ever do you know about the Injustice series like, like video games uh the video games but they also made a comic okay um they made a comic a uh, comic book and it's five years leading up to it so, like, in the video game of Injustice, Gods Among Us, they're... I'm going to show off my nerd skills here. So, Joker has... Uh, Joker is trying to get a Superman, basically. And in the video game... Like like a pet Superman? Hmm? Like a, like a slave Superman? No, no, no. It's just Superman. Joker's gotten bored with Batman. Okay. And so he's trying to he's trying to get Superman. Gotcha. He's like, Batman bores me. He goes, I need more of a challenge. Because I'm gonna go after Superman. Okay, gotcha. So uh in video game, like it starts off where like Superman's fighting Doomsday and he flies Doomsday into space to get him out of the way. And then it cuts to like cuts to the Joker in a in a park in Metropolis trying to blow up a nuke a nuke bomb. And Batman tries to tackle him, and they end up, like, traveling dimensions. And he ends up at another metropolis that Superman is the dictator at. So, like, in the video game, you just get dropped into a um, dictatorship of Superman. Where he's policing his whole world. And then you have to fix the, fix the thing. In the comic book, what it does is it starts from the very beginning... Like, what causes Superman to become a dictator? And spoiler alert, if anybody's watching this and they want to go and read this comic book right now. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. And spoiler alert. So, in the comic book, do you want to read this? Like, am I going to spoil it for you? You're not going to read it. No. I, dude, I don't uh, know if I have the time for it anymore. Probably not. Yeah, go ahead. You're getting all adulty. Yeah, it sucks. Comicsology is what I would suggest for you. I got an app. Anyway. Okay. Um, so, the way that that comic starts off is 
Superman finds out that Lois is pregnant. Like, okay. he hears the heartbeat in Lois's stomach. And he goes to, he flies to Gotham to tell Batman. He's all excited and giddy, and he's like, I have news for you. And Batman just goes, Lois is pregnant. He's like, how did you know? And he, like, Batman does his Batman thing where he tells him how he figured it out. And basically Superman tells Bruce that he wants Bruce to be the godfather of the child. Fast forward, How like cool would that be, dude? Like, like Bruce that, Wayne, like Marlon Brando, like. You come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. But anyway, so fast forward, some shit goes down. Joker kidnaps Lois, and when Superman finds him, he was in like Joker was in like a lead-based submarine or something. And when Superman breaks into the submarine. Joker sprayed him with Scarecrow's fear toxins. And so when, like, he kind of, he didn't know his fear toxins, though, so he kind of shakes it off, and then Doomsday's in the submarine. And so he starts fighting Doomsday, and he flies Doomsday into space. And he's just going to throw Doomsday into the sun to, you know, like, save Metropolis. But the fear toxin made Superman see Doomsday. But it wasn't actually Doomsday, it was Lois. So he just flew Lois with their child into space and killed her. Oh my gosh. Some gnarly shit goes on yeah. in this series. So, Superman's mad because he just killed his wife and kid. Yeah. Uh, flies back down to Metropolis where Batman's interrogating the Joker. And uh, basically, like, Superman goes... If you would have handled this years ago, this would have been dealt with. And Batman yells, no. And jo uh, Superman puts his fist through Joker's stomach. Like straight mercs him. Murders like him. Mercs, mercs. Mercs him. In Dead. the swamp. Yep. In the mush. In the mash. He hid that body in the mash. In the mash. But, uh, so then Superman goes on this tyrant where he's like, fuck it, I kill now. Like, if you don't do what I tell you to, I'll kill you too. Things like that. It goes all wild. He tries to go to Arkham Prison, and he's basically going to take all of the inmates that are at Arkham that continuously break out, and he's going to take them to, like, some super prison that he built. Because, like, it was, it's kind of like a civil war. Like, in Marvel Civil okay. War, where the Justice League splits. You get some people to go with Batman, you get some people to go with just, uh, mm -hmm. Superman. So they go to Arkham to take these prisoners out, and uh, Batman shows up to try to stop them, and he, he was still with Damien. Like, Dick is Nightwing in this series, and Damien is Robin. But Damien is starting to understand... Night, Shell. Night. Super, uh, Damien is starting to side more with Superman. But, like, yeah, Batman is just kind of, like, trying to keep him in check. Like, no, we don't do that, we don't do that. They go to Arkham. Damien has enough of it. He grabs Victor's ass. He asks Victor Zaz, how many people have you killed? And Victor, like, brags about it. And Damien slits his throat. And Batman's like, no, you've crossed the line that you can never come back from. Right. You popped your cherry. Uh, even though you know that Damien's killed people before. Yeah, he's killed people before, for sure. But whatever. So then this battle ensues. And it... Like, and throughout the, the part of the comic leading up to this, like, Dick and Damien, they were still antagonizing each other. Yeah. Um, Dick shows up to try to help Batman, and he, like, says something to Damien's smartass, and Damien gets mad, and he throws one of his rods at Dick, and it hits him in the back of the head, knocks him out. Dick falls and dies million-dollar baby style. No. Yes. He dies by falling and landing on a rock, and he breaks his neck, and he dies. By the way... So furious. My absolute favorite parody, any kind of parody ever. Scary Movie 4? Scary Movie 4. When they make fun of the Million Dollar Baby and all the different neck-breaking... The woman moments. gets hit in the neck with a cheeseburger. cheeseburger. <laughs> oh! <laughs> You set the stool, the ropes on the ring, the cheeseburger. Oh my gosh. 
This is my favorite parody ever, all while making fun of Mike Tyson as well. Who's running around, actual Mike Tyson yeah. running around biting people's ears off. It is not actual Mike them. Tyson. Yeah, it, it is. It is not. It looks just like him. It's not. I'm going to have to fact check you on that. Just watch the video again. I will. It's not Mike Tyson. <laughs> looks like him. But they make fun of Mike Tyson fighting women and biting ears. Yep. He's, he's Fight. Done both of them. Yeah, it's just a pile of ears out in the audience because he's fighting everyone's ears off. Like going around fighting the dead bodies of people that broke their necks and just ripping their Falls in off. super slow mo and the, the stool's not even there and then they just set it out. It, like as she falls, she does this, like, uh, whatever. And like, I don't even think she lands on a rope though. No, um. He does. Yeah, he she's does. She's falling and then like. George! He, he gets in the way or something and. George, a.k.a. Dirt Nasty. He's a rapper. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. He's actually got some decent songs. He also does, uh... Never mind. What's up? He's, uh... Go on. He's into, like, solo webcam porn. Was this one of your SNL clips that I didn't get to? <laughs> yes, it was, actually. It was number 14. <laughs> Connor's just sitting there watching the computer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's something that like he really did. I heard that. It was actually before his acting career. Did like solo bits. Got paid the bills, man. I guess. Solo for I mean, Yeah. I mean Look what we've devolved to. Yeah. Just down here. You're living alone, you just hey, this time I'm just gonna like aim a camera at myself. You know what? That's today's society too, though. Um, Got to film everything. There's a uh, Hulu. Hulu has. Um, I got kicked out of my Hulu like a couple days ago. Hulu has Saturday Night Live. It does have Saturday Night Live. What well, Hulu also has, they have a bunch of documentaries. Eyebrows, eyebrows. <laughs> Not that SNL. Um, Not that SNL. Well, no, Hulu has a bunch of documentaries, and there was one that was like, I didn't watch it, but there was one that, like, <laughs> it's an ABC documentary, or like an investigation into the fucking OnlyFans, and like, nowadays, like, you scroll through TikTok, and you see these girls brag about making $10,000. I'm not on TikTok, so I don't know. <sighs> TikTok, it, TikTok, I don't know, TikTok. I don't know how to feel about TikTok. I can't help but like when I'm bored, I sit there, I scroll through TikTok. And like you see some funny videos, you see some cute videos, you see some cool montages, like there's a bunch of cool stuff on there. But at the same time, you have these girls that are trying to show off their talents where they're like doing a dance to something, but like they're just trying to get views. Cause they're wearing loose clothes yeah. and whatever else and it's like but you got girls that want to brag about making ten thousand dollars on only fans in a month and it's like okay cool but that ain't gonna last like eventually that stuff's gonna end and then you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get a real job or explain to your kids how you paid for this stuff yeah like shit like that same thing, like, Liz watched the movie Hustlers. Yep. She was like, man, stripping seems like the way to go. Like, Fuck you, Will. I was like, we don't need to strip. Like, you're smart. Like, use your brain, not your boobs. Yeah. I just feel like that's not something that you'd want to try to explain to somebody how you paid for something. Yeah, yeah, no stripping. Which some people are like, well, there's nothing wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with it. If that's what you want to do. But if you got talents and something else, do those talents. Like, shit. Right. Like, if you knew how to cook, but you were like, you know what? I can make way more money being a male stripper. Like, if you let your culinary skills go to waste because you can make an extra five grand shaking your giblets everywhere, I would be ashamed of you. That's the only reason why I'm not a male stripper. Because of your culinary skills? Yeah, because I can make an extra five grand. Well, that's it? That's it. That's the only reason. Otherwise, I would absolutely be a male stripper. I just make about five grand more as a chef. Oh, you make more as a chef? Yeah, as a chef. Yeah. I'm a reverse stripper. 
I come in naked and they pay me to put clothes on. You know, that's a great hustle. It only works when you're fat. That's a really good hustle. Nobody wants to see a fat naked guy. It's a real skill. Nice. It's talent. I like that. This is a wild podcast. Um, we kind of got like way off topic as always. I feel way like. off topic. There's there's gonna be some loose ends I think in there. Uh, a lot of yelling. Maybe next week I'll be able yeah. to get through a whole podcast without yelling. I just lost it on a chicken head lips. Man, <laughs> on that note. Yeah, great podcast. Uh, I need to leave this room. Hopefully next week. Uh, we won't miss next week and we can get back to our weekly podcast. And yes. Get back to uh, bringing the smiles and the laughs every week. Uh, those we, of you that hung out. We won't talk about poop next week. We did a good job avoiding it today. Scout's honor. I thought you were going for a high five. That's not Scout's no. honor. That's not Scout's. No, that's tribute. It's, I can't do, is this Scout's honor? I was never in the Boy Scouts. I, I, neither was I. You gotta like tuck the thumb. Neither was I. I don't know, I don't know how to do Scout's honor. Scout's honor, whatever it is. Yeah, so Scout's honor with the Scout's gang sign. That's really what the Boy Scouts is, it's just a gang for kids. True. Teach them stuff, but. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out. If y'all been hanging out, uh, we'll work on some highlights. We'll try not to incriminate ourselves so much next time. But we'll uh, catch y'all later. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, love you, bye. Okay, love you, bye.